Hi, I'm Brendan, and today we're going to be talking about struct alignment in C. So in order to be able to tackle some of these C struct alignment problems, there are really three main rules that you should be aware of. So first we're going to briefly walk through what those rules are. So the first rule, which I start because I personally believe is one of the most important rules. So this rule is that the starting, of that starting address of a variable with a struct must be divisible by the size of that type. So what that means is, let's say that we have an integer uh, within a struct, and remember that an integer is size 4. Uh, an integer is 4 bytes. So that means that an integer within a struct could start at address 0, 4, 8, 12, etc., but it could not start at addresses 1, 2, and 3 because those are not divisible by 4. On the other hand, if we just have a char within a struct, well, a char can start at any address because a char is size one, it's one byte, so we're not bound by any sort of um, larger um, divisibility that we, that we need to fulfill. So that's the first rule, and the second and third rules um, sort of follow from that. They're, they have a pretty similar flavor, but they more specifically refer to the structs themselves. So the second one is that the starting address of a struct must be divisible by its largest primitive type. So again, kind of going off of our example of integers and chars, so let's say that we have a struct that uh, is simply um, a bunch of, like, let's say it's seven chars. So our struct can, again, start at any address because its largest uh, data type is a char, which is one byte, and so we're not bound by any restrictions there. However, let's say we have a struct that has seven chars and uh, one integer. Well, now that one integer makes it so that the largest primitive type within that struct is an integer, which is four bytes, so now the starting address of that struct also must be divisible by four. So very, very similar to the um, first rule, but just um, know that that first rule also applies here um, to structs as well, and for structs to use its largest primitive type. And finally, the third rule is that the total size of a struct must be divisible by its largest primitive type. So what that means is that um, Again, kind of going off of these same examples, if we have a struct that is just full of seven chars, well, then we don't really have to worry about this rule. We can just say that the size of the struct is seven because we have seven one-byte variables. But now let's say we have uh, seven chars and one integer. So now, again, our largest primitive type is an integer, which is four bytes. So that means that the total size of this struct needs to be divisible by four. And so if we have seven chars and one integer, that would be a total size of 11, because we have 7 plus 4 is 11. But 11 is not divisible by 4. So what we would have to do is add one byte of padding to make the size of the struct 12. And so that would fulfill this third rule here. So that's just a brief overview of these rules. And now we're going to apply these rules to a specific example. So let's walk through this example of the struct we created at, that is called Squirrel. So we're creating an instance of Squirrel named Sam, and we're trying to figure out uh, what memory addresses do these specific variables within Squirrel fall on, and also what is the total size of these structs. So let's start at the beginning here. We see that we declared that struct Squirrel will start at address 1000. And so this was just sort of um, arbitrary. We're just using this as convention. But we know that Squirrel could start at address 1000 no matter what because the largest primitive type we have would be eight bytes, like a double, for example. And so a 1,000 would be divisible by eight, so it's also divisible by four, two, one, et cetera. So we know that just saying that it maybe starts at address 1,000 is uh, a good reference point. So we also have given that we are working with a 64-bit system, and I'll get to what this means in just a second. So the first variable that we see within Squirrel is short age. And so uh, the main rule we need to be concerned with here is that the starting address of a variable needs to be divisible by the size of the variable. Uh, in this case, a short is um, two bytes, but remember we're starting at a thousand, which of course is divisible by two. So we can just say that um, age would fall in the range of addresses from 1000 to 1001. So great, we got that one out. And now we're looking at the second variable here, which is a 
pointer to a squirrel object. So we have this partner uh, variable here that would point to another squirrel that may, uh, means somehow those two squirrels are linked. And so now this is where the 64-bit system component comes into play. So what a 64-bit system means is that memory addresses are 64 bits, or you could also think of it as 8 bytes. And that is in contrast to 32-bit systems, which have 32-bit addresses, or 4 bytes. And so that's actually really important for pointers, because that's what a pointer is. It's a memory address. And so if we have a 64-bit system, that means that the size of a pointer is 8 bytes. And so that means that the partner variable is 8 bytes. And that's a really important uh, point here. Uh, a lot of students sometimes get confused because they think that the uh, size of this variable is the size of the struct itself, of the uh, struct squirrel. But remember, that's not what this is. This is actually just a memory address that points to a struct. So since the size of this variable is 8 bytes, it needs to start at an integer that is divisible by 8. So we have to skip addresses 1002 through 1007, and we say that partner starts at 1008. And then it's 8 bytes, so it would go all the way up through 10 and 15. Okay, great. And now we have integer weight. Again, an integer is 4 bytes. Uh, and the next available address is 1016, which is conveniently divisible by 4. And so that means that the range of weight would be starting at 1016 and ending uh, 4 bytes later at 1019. Okay, great. Now we see that the next um, object that we have within this squirrel struct is another struct. And so this is where these um, second and th uh, third rules that we talked about previously really come into play. So we have this tail struct, uh, and then we declare an instance of tail. And so one of the first things we would need to consider is where would this struct actually start? So let's remember our rule that the starting address of a struct must be divisible by its largest primitive data type. And so um, we look here and we see we have an integer and a double. So we see that the largest type is a double, which is 8 bytes. So tail needs to start at an address divisible by 8. So we have to go up to 1024. And so then we don't know where it ends yet because we uh, haven't figured out the address breakdown of the inside of the struct yet. So we'll get back to the ending address of this in just a second. So now we have this integer fuzziness, and so that will be 4 bytes starting at 1024, since that, divis that is divisible by 4. And now we have double length, so that's 8 bytes, so that means we need to go up to address 1032, because um, that is the first address divisible by 8 that comes after 1027. And now we see that we have the addresses ranging from 1024 to 1039. And so this is 16 bytes. And 16 is divisible by our largest primitive type, which is um, double or 8 bytes. So that means that this struct already uh, fulfills this third rule that we talked about, where the size needs to be divisible by the size of the largest primitive type. So then we can just say that this struct goes from 1024 to 1039. Okay, and then lastly, we have this one byte char is healthy. Chars are just one byte, so they can start anywhere. So we'll take the next available address, which is 1040. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is figure out what is the total size of this struct squirrel. So right now, we have that struct squirrel starts at 1000, and we go all the way up to address 1041. And so that means that right now, the size of the struct is 41 bytes. So currently, this does not fulfill our third rule that the struct needs to be a total size that is divisible by the size of its largest primitive type. And so another really confusing point that isn't necessarily intuitive, um, the largest primitive type of squirrel would actually still be uh, eight bytes. So whether you want to consider it the double or the pointer to a squirrel, either way, it's 8 bytes. It is not 16 bytes. So you don't want to consider the internal structs. Even though that is larger, you're only looking at the primitive types. So that means that the struct squirrel needs to be 
a total size divisible by 8 and not 16. And so since we're at 41 right now, that means we need to jump all the way up to uh, 48 to make it divisible by uh, 8 bytes. And so then we would say that squirrel goes from 1000 to 1047. And so we might write that there's just some padding here from 1041 to 1047. And so we would just say that's padding. And so that is how we would align this particular squirrel, Sam, in memory.